Hi, this is AJ from Pinnacle Diving Company, and today we're going to take a look at a proficiency dive for two advanced certified divers performing some search and recovery and light salvage operations. Now these two divers here uh, did a really great job at coming together and working as a team to make this dive successful. This bag that you're seeing here uh, weighed 18 kilograms, which is 40 pounds, and believe me, it was a massive pain in the butt to get down there. <laughs> Um, it sat at 18 meters, which is 60 feet, on a sandy bottom, as you can see, in a well-protected area with no boat traffic allowed, so divers only. Um, and it, prior to the dive, like they did everything needed to make sure that they had all the right equipment, and then they discussed diver positions and roles and responsibilities for each diver. So as you can see, like they're dividing the work uh, appropriately, right? They discussed who was to do what, when, and how, who carried what equipment, who rigged everything, who was gonna fill the bags, who maintained control of the load, who controlled the lift bags to keep them neutral during the ascent phase, and so on. So, what we're looking at right now is they're rigging the bag. During the initial planning phase of the dive, they calculated that they needed two of these 50 pound lift bags to lift this load. Um, they estimated the, the weight and the, uh, the vault by the volume of the bag, its displacement, and of course to use that information with the depth, and they, they came up with a volume of gas necessary, and they, they figured that they needed two of these bags. So right now you, you can see that the bag is being rigged um, using a locking, climbing rated carabiner, uh, and then the other diver is going to take over after uh, the tank with the appropriate gas in it is staged and then fill the bags. Now the purpose of this dive was to simulate recovery of a weighted object underwater, but the exact weight was supposed to be unknown. The diver's initial job was to use the appropriate search patterns and techniques to find and locate the object, then mark its location, and then measure the object to determine its volume and note its depth. From here, they would return to shore and use that information to calculate the, dis the object's displacement. Knowing the general characteristics of the object allowed them for, uh, a relative, to perform a relative estimation of its weight. Uh, and then taking its estimated weight, displacement, and depth, the divers would be able to calculate the gas volume needed to lift the object from the bottom in order to recover it safely. Now, I mean, of course, for training, this was all simulated. So from here, they selected the appropriate equipment needed to perform the recovery. Uh, they calculated that they needed these two lift bags, like I said earlier, uh, for the volume of gas necessary to lift it, uh, to lift the bag off the bottom, and an appropriate cylinder size with the amount of gas needed. Now this is an important note to make, and you can see that we have a small six liter aluminum cylinder here that's rigged up for this operation. You never, never, use the tank that you're breathing on to do these kinds of things, to perform uh, recovery operations using a lift bag, uh, you know, like salvage operations. You never use your own breathing gas to do this. I don't care what anyone says or what other videos you may see or what some dive training agency or some instructor may tell you. You never use your own source of breathing gas to perform a recovery operation from, period. That means like even if the bag is an open style bottom bag, you don't stick your regulator up under underneath the bag and fill the bag. You don't do that. Now these two bags are closed bags, so they don't have an open bottom. Um, and even if they did have an open bottom, there's two types, right? You have an open bottom, which is just an open bottom bag, and then you have an open bottom with a flapper valve in it, similar to what an SMB will have. These are closed bags, so they're not open at all. The only way to fill them is through the, the orifice, the oral inflation button and it's best to use a low pressure inflator hose from the staged cylinder to do this. Uh, it, they're closed, it's for safety. Uh, they do have OPVs, uh, over pressurization valves, in case they get too full. Um, moving on. So they didn't need any line to tie the object to the lift bags, as the object itself was a bag, and it had built-in uh, wraparound style webbing straps that were strong enough to secure uh, the weight and hold the weight inside, and then some. And it was a really, really tough, heavy-duty nylon bag. Um, however, they did need a locking carabiner. They needed a real climbing-rated locking carabiner, and this is what you should always use uh, if you're if you're going to be using a carabiner. 
uh, to do these types of things. You want a locking carabiner that is a climbing rated one. It can handle a certain number of newtons of force. All right. You don't use a non-rated carabiner and you don't use a simple uh, open gate style carabiner either uh, for safety. If, if the bag jolts or when it hits the surface, you know, if the load uh, shifts, there's a chance that it could come uh, undone from the carabiner. It can come out and, and then fall down, uh, right back down to the bottom. Um, you know, and many people have these, these fake carabiners that they use for like their keys and stuff. You never want to use any of these. You always use a real rated carabiner that has a locking gate. Um, and then before the operation, again, like I discussed earlier, they, they devised a plan, uh, an appropriate plan for the dive. So as you can see, they filled both of these bags. Um, well, they filled one and then filled a little bit in the other one. Once it was neutral, they began lifting up and exactly according to plan like they should. One person is controlling the bag and the other person is controlling the load underneath. Uh, and they started moving a little fast when they got off the bottom. And, and that's okay. Again, this is training. Uh, it's a, we just made sure that they slowed down a little bit. And the person that's controlling the bag is supposed to be venting air as you're rising to maintain neutral buoyancy of the bag, which means that they have to kick. You know, the bag is neutral, the, the, the load is neutral. So it's not going to rise to the surface on its own. They're going to have to power it on up there and then, of course, continue venting on the way to the surface. And then you see the other diver is controlling the load. What you don't see is you don't see anybody underneath the load. And this is essential. This is a really important uh, safety point. You never, 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 never place yourself underneath a load that's being lifted. If anything were to happen, and that load came down on, uh, broke free, it would come down right on top of you and it could kill somebody. Uh, it, it could cause serious injury or, or, or grave harm, right? So you always make sure that people are clear, you know, the divers are off to the side, and there's a person that's controlling uh, each component of the lift. The bag is rising at the uh, maximum safe ascent rate, so they're planning for nine meters per minute or 30 feet per minute. Uh, to get the bag off. The dive total time is less than 15 minutes. They are nowhere near their no decompression limit. So uh, it's safe for them to bypass the safety stop and come right to the surface. This is one methodology you can use to do this. Many other people teach this skill uh, to bring the bag across a distance to get it to the shore. Um, but here, I mean, this is perfectly fine to get it to the surface. All in all, I think that they did a really great job in getting this bag all the way to the surface safely. Uh, once it broke the surface um, and you saw the bag kind of jolted a little bit, which is ex expected at this point, uh, they needed to establish their own buoyancy. And then after that, they needed to fill the second lift bag again for safety so that it floated. Uh, and then that was the end of the evolution. Um, if there was a boat or a recovery crew, or surface support, then they could, you know, uh, help recovering the object that way. But uh, again, there's two ways. You could, you could do it this way and then you could swim it back to shore or you could keep it underwater and swim it to shore underwater. Here you can see the, the diver number two who was manning the, the load is now filling the second lift bag. Uh, to make sure that it's buoyant at the surface and it's not going to go under or anything bad's going to happen to it. So this was a really successful uh, training evolution for search and recovery and life salvage operations. And these two divers, these two advanced certified divers did a really good job at uh, successfully and safely, and safely uh, executing a recovery of a, of a load from the bottom. Uh, they, they did it using exactly the tools that was necessary for the job. Uh, is there room for improvement? Absolutely. And they'll repeat this process in the future, I'm sure, uh, several other times to, to make sure that they have this, uh, these techniques down. And we'll add other things in there, such as ropes not tying, you know, different types of loads, that type of stuff. But other than that, like I said, I think they did a really great job. Uh, they selected the right equipment, made a solid dive plan, and performed the techniques properly for uh, recovering this this 40-pound uh, bag, this 18-kilogram bag. That thing was heavy. But anyways, 
thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. Bravo Zulu, good job.